her return to New York City, nearly everyone seemed to turn out to see the sleek new ship glide into the harbor with a fireboat and huge harbor craft escort. We can't turn the clock back. Everything that was aboard that ship has been taken off. Then they offered up all of her furnishings when the financing promise fell through. Glassware and bedding, china and dishware to doorknobs to towels to deck chairs all auctioned off to the, the highest and bidder. She went up for auction despite all the talks and objections of more than a few which wowed a lot of us when we saw the prices that some of these things were going for. People suddenly, by the 80s, they wanted pieces of a more romantic age. So pieces of the United States fetched great prices and has prodded the brisk ocean liner memorabilia business today. In 1984, Guernsey's, the New York-based auction house, they conducted the largest auction ever held. Dealers tell me that the SS United States at this moment is in the top five big sellers of ocean liner items, a wine bucket, very simple aluminum, $5,000, a simple stainless table, $10,000. And then in 1984, all of her fittings and furnishings were sold off, and then what remained was ransacked until finally in the 90s, she was towed overseas and stripped to the bare bulkheads. Well, in the early 90s, the glorious SS United States was towed across the Atlantic by a single tug to the Ukraine and to Turkey for asbestos removal, decried by Greenpeace as the ship of death because this famed product that my grandfather was so delighted to use turned into a real liability. So tragic that the ship of state was suddenly being called the ship of death. I think that may have been her lowest moment. You have to use your imagination when you go down below to imagine what, how grand it was. The best place to get a feeling for what it's like is the main staircase. You can, it kind of winds around and it's got the, still the aluminum handrails and you kind of can imagine people in gowns coming up and down to the main dining room and uh, you can really picture it. It's when they, they gutted it, uh, 1950s, that modern style with the aluminum was, was kind of old fashioned at that point. So they stripped it out, it didn't feel classic yet and now it would be the greatest thing if they had just left the ship the way it was in the 50s. So there's not much left down there, the little bits and traces of things. It's thrilling that she's still here and that you can still recognize a lot of the areas for what they were. This is the enclosed promenade deck of the SS United States where back in the day you could have had a lot of fun. You could take in a movie in the cinema which was aft, uh, maybe Bon Voyage, something in Cinerama even. And then you could work your way forward and have a nice cocktail, a cigarette, a cigar in the first class smoking room with those gorgeous leather chairs. Then the next thing you know, you find yourself going through the reception area and into one of my favorite spaces, which is the Navajo Lounge. And then on to the first class ballroom, followed by the observation lounge, which with its blue panels is also one of my absolute favorite places aboard this ship. When I heard that I could possibly get on the ship, I, I just seized it. It was very difficult to ever, ever go below and actually see the engineering spaces. I was fortunate enough to do that many times. And when you got down there, uh, very often you would see canvas uh, placed over the uh, instruments and dials so that uh, some roving reporter couldn't uh, get access to uh, highly classified information. This is the engine room, and this entryway right here is where I began the video of below, going right into the main boiler area. Robert Wogan, he's, he's fearless. Uh, he spent hours by himself prowling through the engine room with a infrared video camera on his forehead and in darkness, and the ship is huge. It's easy to get lost. I always had a fascination for machines and the ships themselves, so now that I was here, Unattended, I was able to go wherever I want, whenever I want, and that took me right into the engine room. The smell of ferrous, metal, rusting, fuel oil, the paint, the age, there's nothing like it. You know, you just look at the size and the weight and the detail. The shafts, you know, are this big, you know, you can't even get your arms around them. It is a maze. It's, it just goes on and everything looks very similar. 
It's fascinating and it's beautiful and I had no choice but to go down and make this video. It's a very cool place to be. Whenever I give lectures on ships today, I get a lot of questions about, is she coming back? Will she come back? Can she come back? Is there any news? Don't let them scrap her as if I could stop it. But none, that kind of wonderful camaraderie with that ship. She has been purchased over the years by a number of different owners who have had all good intentions of bringing her back. It's like a soap opera character that never goes away. She's now laid up far longer than she ever sailed. She is a national icon in a way, yet we haven't done much to preserve her, sadly. There were several people who tried to care, raise money, but they never succeeded. Just because you have the money to buy a rusting old ship for two or three million dollars doesn't mean that you have the wherewithal to bring it back. There's this hook of some kind of a plan always to save her, to bring her back. In the 70s, I remember it was floating hotel, floating motel, missionary center, trade fair ship, hospital ship, troop ship. There's always been a scheme to keep her going and she's hung in there. She's a hull. There is nothing left of the United States on the inside. Like having someone you, you love uh, suffer suddenly from dementia. You know, the, the beautiful person is there, but the soul is gone. The ship is green. All the asbestos has been taken and removed from it. She's clear from bulkhead to bulkhead. An architect could come in and he could build a hotel exactly the way that he wants. That was actually fun to walk through the main ballroom because I was listening to the music that would have been played in the ballroom and I was sort of trying to visualize what it would have been like in there with those beautiful etched glass panels that were illuminated with scenes of underwater life and those red barrel back chairs around that round dance floor with the orchestra playing. And I was just trying to conjure the romance of what I love about ocean liners and ship travel. And that lifted my spirits. My cell phone rings, and it's Mike Alexander from Colorado, and he says, Joe, are you sitting down? I said, yeah, Mike, what's up? He said, Norwegian Cruise Lines has just purchased the SS United States. With the extraordinary statement that they were going to return her to cruise service. The United States would be this unique one-off property that, that people would go to for the ship itself. Uh, the intent is for her to recapture the Blue Ribbon. I think it would be fantastic to have a ship that could produce that kind of burst of speed again, the fastest ship in the world. It would be fun to go that fast, wouldn't it? They were now the stewards of a national treasure. They hadn't just bought a cruise ship that wasn't significant. They owned the SS United States. But despite their best efforts, there was a downturn in the economy and a power shift within the corporation, and NCL decided to put the ship up for sale. And when no one came forth, they started to accept bids from scrappers. I do know that there were a number of scrappers that came to uh, examine the vessel. It really looked like the United States had reached the end. The Conservancy is playing a vital role in, in saving the ship. Well, they may be the only way to save the ship. The Conservancy was started in 2004, and that was shortly after Norwegian Cruise Line purchased the ship in 2003. There are people who worked on the ship, there are people who have more passengers on board that ship, and there are people who just are interested in the ship and this history. For better or for worse, there's no other American ocean liners left. The SS United States Conservancy is working with others to ensure that the vessel has a dignified future. There's a lot of people involved in this effort, and we all feel the same way. Failure is not an option. We can never lose the SS United States. Flagship of our nation, the strongest and fastest to date. We cannot stand by, we will not accept that this is to be her fate. If we had not, you know, continued full speed ahead, I don't think we'd be where we are today. We held an event in New York and it was part of our SOS campaign because we knew that it was the 11th hour. It, it was all hands on deck time. So the situation, it's safe to say, is quite dire. And suddenly the SS United States was simply on their uh, red ink list and they wanted to get rid of it very quickly and that's when they put it up for sale. 
Well, that was a knife in the heart because there goes something else. It's a bit of our history. It's like burning the flag. This is an icon. This is part of America. It does feel, you know, like people are starting to get it. This ship absolutely cannot, cannot be lost. She's lasted this long because she's, she's not done yet. It's hard for me to believe that something that was built of this magnitude could be obsolete. I am absolutely confident that somebody, someone, we may know who it is, we may not know who it is, someone is going to step up and save the ship. I know it. Thank you.